For the knit stitch, which is the most common foundation stitch of knitting next to the purl stitch, or right even before the purl stitch, um, we will do it as follows. After doing a cast on like this, I use long tail cast on. Here's the long tail dangling, get that out of the way. We will use our working yarn and do this. We'll go, we want to line up our cast on edges to the right to make it easier to get into the stitch. And now with a, a, the empty needle in our right hand, we'll go up into that stitch and position it, position this needle behind the left needle. Grasp the yarn and then go behind and across the back needle so that you're bringing the yarn between the two needles. And then you can easily sort of more easily once you've got it in that position, you can push that new yarn to the front, creating a new loop on this needle and slide off the old one. There's a little rhyme that goes along with this. So we go in through the front door. This helps to remember. Once around the back, peek through the window and off jumps Jack. In through the front door, once around the back, peek through the window and off jumps Jack. And this is a great method. Um, it's very the most common method in America to knit. It's called English knitting, sometimes called American knitting or the throw method because of this action. It's called throwing the yarn. And um, one thing that's great about it is you can let go of the yarn, pick it up, let go of it again if you want to as you go. And it makes it easier. It's an easy method for teaching kids for that reason. And even kids who you aspire might, even if you're a continental knitter and you want your child to be one, <laughs> consider teaching them English to begin. It's just easier for them to get at first and they can switch if they want. Um, that said, uh, even though you can let go of the yarn each time, it's nice to have a good yarn hold method that is more fluid. And one, one, the way I, um, you often will see people hold the yarn for tension is to come under it with their pinky, wrap it once around, and duck under with their forefinger index finger and then so I've come up into the stitch throw it pop it through and off and if you're more skilled if you become more skilled than I am at English knitting I'm a continental knitter these days you might be able to do this action without even letting go of the right needle Whatever is more fluid for you. There's no right way or wrong way to hold the yarn or anything. Just whatever works for you. And um, I'll show you a couple alternative tensioning methods. If this, if what I just showed you seems too tight, you can go, you can try just weaving the yarn in and out of your fingers like so. That'll be a little looser. It allows the yarn to slide through a little more easily or you can um, do a single uh, two wraps around the four fingers another method that's often used although it might might be the other way actually it might be a little easier so that it's coming in the front of the finger at the end of there whatever works see what works for you and one thing is always important to remember when you're learning to knit is try not to, it's common for beginners to make their stitches really tight to make it look nice and even, and it does, but 
it's a bad habit to get into because uh, it's harder on the hands and more difficult to straining on the hands and just harder to work the stitches. So that's a knit row English style.